All right then, gang, so we're reaching the finish line. This is all looking pretty good. There's a couple of things left that I want to do. And the first one is how we're handling the errors over here, because at the minute, if we try to add a new exercise and we miss some of the fields, we get this error down here, which is good, but the error is absolutely naff. I wouldn't want to give my users an error like that because it says all this jargon, workout validation failed, reps, path reps is required, and path load is required, etc. Now, instead, it would be nicer if there was a simpler error message right here and also maybe highlight in red the border of the input fields that are required once they try to send a request and they're not filled in. So we're going to see how to do that in this lesson. So the first thing we have to do is step back into the back end code and open up the workout controller because this is where we're handling the post request to add a new workout document. Now, at the minute, we try to do that right here. And if there's an error, we catch it here and we send that error message back. Now, this error is being created by Mongoose because we created a Mongoose model based on this schema right here. And if Mongoose tries to save a new document to the database, whereby the document doesn't correspond or doesn't uphold this schema, then it's gonna throw that error. Now, that's great. It applies this level of security for us so that we don't save anything to the database that doesn't match this schema. However, the error message is absolutely pants. And ideally, I'd want to make a more friendly error message. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the workout controller and do my own little check here. So what I'll do is I'll create a new variable and I'm going to call that empty fields and set that to an empty array to begin with. So the idea here is we're going to detect which fields are empty when they send the post request. And then we can send that information back to the client. So I'll first of all check if we don't have a title. So if the title is empty, then I'm going to get the empty fields and I'm going to push something to that empty fields array. And it's going to be the name of the field that's empty. So title. And I'll do the same thing for the other fields as well. So we have if not load, then I'll take the empty fields and I'll push to that. And this time it's going to be load that we push. And then finally, we'll do a check for the reps. So if we don't have a value for that, again, we'll take the empty fields and we'll push a value onto that, which is gonna be reps. So by the time we've done these three checks, we should have an array of empty fields and it's going to contain any of these things here or none of them if they fill them all in. All right. Now then, after we've done all those checks, we can do one more check. And this check is to see if the length of this array is greater than zero, because if it is greater than zero, it means one of these things or more is inside the array. And at that point, we don't want to go any further and even try to add that document to the database. We just want to send an error back to the client and say which fields are missing. So I can say if empty fields dot length is greater than zero, then we're going to do something. And what we're going to do is return a response where the status is 400 and then also return some JSON, which is an object. And then inside this object, we'll have an error message that says something like, please fill in all the fields. So that's the message we're going to show on the front end underneath the form. And then also I want to send back as a second argument or a second property rather inside this JSON, the empty fields themselves. So that will be an array of all of the fields that still need filling in. All right. So now we can go back to our front end and we can handle this error a bit differently. So let's cross this off close the back end and open up the front end and head to the workout form components. So this right here, this is where we're getting back the error. And now we can kind of approach this a little bit differently. So in terms of the error itself, we don't really need to do much else because we already have some state for the error message. It's just that the error message on the error property that we get back is a little nicer now. But what we do also have is we have the empty fields also inside this JSON response. So what I'm going to do is create some state for that. So I'll say const and we'll call this empty fields and set empty fields like so. And we'll say that's equal to use 
states, and we're going to pass in an empty array to begin with. Now, if we get some empty fields, we can populate this. So let's do that right here. I'm going to say set empty fields like so. And inside there, we'll take the JSON and the empty fields property. Okay, so whatever empty fields we get back from the server, we're setting that inside this piece of state right here. Now, there's one more thing we need to do, and that's to set the empty fields again, but this time when the response is okay. So much like we set the error to null, we're gonna set the empty fields to an empty array again, so we don't see those errors in the page. So now we have those empty fields right here. We can kind of use those to conditionally style these different inputs. So the way we're gonna do that is by giving these different inputs a conditional class. So let's start with the top one, and we'll say that the class name is equal to something dynamic, and that's gonna be the empty fields. And then we're gonna do a check basically here. We're gonna do a ternary operator. We're gonna evaluate something to see if it includes the title, which is basically what this input is for, and if it does, apply a class to it. If it doesn't, just apply a class of an empty string. So in essence, we're kind of giving it no class. So we'll say dot includes right here, and we're looking for the title. So that's the thing we're kind of evaluating, and that's gonna be true or false. Now, for a ternary operator, we do the question mark, and if it's true, the class we want to give this field or this input is the error class. Then we do a colon, and then the class we want to apply if this is false is just an empty string. So we take away the class in essence. Okay, so now we're only getting this error class if this is true, if title is in the empty fields. And so we can style this error class for this input in the CSS. All right then, so let's go down to the next one. And in fact, I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna paste it in here and paste it in here, but we need to change what we're looking for. So this one is the load, and then this one is the reps. So now we have those kind of conditional classes. We also want to style those things as well, so they have maybe a red border. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy this style from my repo over here, woohoo. And let me go to index.css, only a dead simple style. So we say any input with a class of error has a border now with one pixel solid, and the color is this error color that we define right at the top. All right, so let's save this and give it a whirl. So then let's start to add a new workout. So I'm gonna say bench press, and the load is gonna be 30 kilograms. And in fact, what we'll do is we'll send the request without these two fields present. So add the workout, and you can see now these two are red. This one isn't because we have a value for this, but these two are red, and it says down here, please fill in all the fields. So we'll say for the load, 35 kilograms. What I'm gonna do is add this workout, and we can see now the red is taken away from this field, but it still remains here. The reps is gonna be 20, then we can add the workout, then all the errors disappear, the form's cleared, and we see the new exercise over here. Awesome. So that, my friends, is all working.